practice. Again, I'm going to use Premiere to edit this video. So once I open, Premiere should be in your dock down here. It's a PR for Premiere. Once it's open, you can say File, New Project. Or there is also a New Project button right here, either one. Uh, we can give it a name. Uh, this is going to be Interview. And if you hit Browse, I'm just going to put it on the desktop because I don't have a folder. It would be best to probably put her in a folder and do that, but I just didn't do that, so I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now. And I'm not going to worry about any other settings at that point. Uh, in this new project window, you can kind of leave this stuff default because it's really not going to do anything for you at this point. Um, most of these are just setting up the computer, making sure you have enough scratch disk. And you know, if you don't know what scratch disk is, as a program is running and if you're working on a project, it needs memory. And it actually uses part of the hard drive as memory, hence the word scratch disk. So it uses part of your hard drive as memory. And that's sort of what it's doing here. And um, so if you have a, that, that's the downfall. If you buy a laptop that doesn't have a lot of memory to it, you're going to run into problems because it's not going to be able to use the hard drive space as RAM. It's basically using the hard drive space as part of RAM. And so, and I don't even know what that setting is right there. So um, just hit OK. It opens up Premiere. We've already looked at the program a little bit. The first thing you can do is import uh, the uh, footage. And there's one piece of footage that all we need to input. It's under File, Input. And we can choose Clip 5, M4V. And there she is. Again, she's just an interview of one uh, person who is uh, talking on a white background. So if we want to watch it, we can double click on it and it'll open up in the editing window that's up here. So, you know, you can pretty much run through it and, and, and make some decisions. I'll just go through it real quick here. We're not going to do Hey, I am a student here at West Valley College and I belong to the TRIO program. What is TRIO? TRIO is a federal student support service program that helps low income or first generation students throughout college. Okay, so the first thing I want you to, you know, this was a common way of shooting a video in the past you know, couple of years. And you just shoot a talking head looking directly at the camera on a white background. And we'll look at other interviews, but this is just one technique. The thing to keep in mind, of course, is where her eyes are, about one third of the way up the screen. You know, you want a nice composition. You don't want her hair going all the way to the top. A little space up there would be nice. And so I just kind of, tight, it's tightly framed. Uh, one of the reasons why it's also in the white background is because there wasn't very much room. This room was only, you know, maybe nine or ten feet wide. And so I think it's one of the very wide angle lens and very close. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to get a, a you know, nice background in a situation like that. So that's another reason why it's just a plain white background. Um, lighting wise, you know, there's some lights in the side on her as well as on the front. Um, that way you got a little bit of light around the outside of her hair, as you can see there, and a little bit on her shoulder there. And so it's a, it's kind of, they were softbox, the softbox kind of light is, is one that has um, kind of diffuse light. It's not very harsh, harsh would be it's a very, like sunlight. So it's very diffused. The color balance is a little off. She's a little kind of reddish, warm. Tonight we're going to look at what, what is uh, white balance, and white balance is how your camera calibrates the uh, uh, color temperature of the light. And of course, color temperature of light is measured in Kelvin. And, you know, cameras like this, or most video cameras, can go from like 3,000 or 2,600 Kelvin up to 6,000 Kelvin, and in between there, um, depending upon the light temperature, you can balance your camera. Is there an ideal temperature? Uh, no, it's just you need to balance the camera for the lights. The biggest, the ideal is not to have mixed lights. I don't have a diagram. Um, next week we'll look a little bit more about that. I have some diagrams where I have some diagrams and you're able to see, you know, different lights, the 5,000 would be Kelvin, you know, incandescent lights, 3,200, and then fluorescent lights is around 4,000. And if you have all three of them in the same scene, they're all, it's going to be all different colors. So the, the, color, the camera needs to be balanced. So again, we can watch her. 
And then see she paused. She just goes into it. Okay. You can read, try to memorize like two sentences, read them in, in and then talk, talk to them into the camera, and then you can read like two more and then talk to them again. Like it's good like that. It's okay. okay, we can start editing. We don't need to watch the whole thing. But ideally, if we have more time, I'd watch the whole thing and then make some decisions. But right now, I'm just going to go in. She's already said her name, I guess. I don't remember if she said it. No, she just said she's from the program, right? Like, uh, Canada. I don't know. Let's cut that first part and put it in the timeline. Okay, so let's just go right off the bat. I'm going to start at the beginning again. You know, so I don't want to start with her mouth open, though. Um, hey, I'm... So I might go a little okay. bit earlier. So here we go. So Something like that, you know, where she's kind of smiling. Maybe a little bit. I'd like to leave a little bit of space at the beginning. So again, if you want it set in point, it's this squiggly line right here. It's it's called an in point right here. So double click on it, get it up here, hit the little um, in point where she starts. Hey, I am. Oh, I don't like that either. I don't like the way she breathes at the beginning. Uh, if you want to zoom in a little bit more on on what she's doing this is a little zoom option here let you see more and see this little option right here as I'm dragging it allows you to go into detail it's not really changing it you see there's a whole video here it's just the way you're viewing it so then I can I can scrub see how I'm scrubbing so scrubbing is where you're moving the blue bar to I know this is tough it's tough to intro here I don't like her breathing. I, I would probably, what I would do is if I had time, I, I would I would keep maybe that in there, but cut the breathing out by just changing the audio in that point maybe, so you don't hear the, you know, leave her mouth opening, but just cut that out. I do that a lot, because I interview a lot of people. I, I, I do a lot of Japanese videos, and I have to go, and sometimes something happens, and you just gotta cut little pieces out. So again, let's leave that in. Hey, I am a student here at West Valley College, and I belong to the TRIO program. What is TRIO? TRIO is a federal student support service program that helps low-income or first-generation students throughout college. Okay, then she stops. So then I'm going to cut it there. First-generation students throughout college. Okay, as soon as she's done with college, I'm going to cut it there. So again, out point is this one. So we already have a starting point. we got an ending point right there. And then if you remember from uh, the little bars over here, this one's insert. And if I click insert, it will put it in the timeline. Oh, I guess I don't have a sequence yet. I might have to drag it down there because it's not. it doesn't know that this is a sequence down here. So you might have to drag it. I might have to put my cursor up here inside her uh, video and drag it down there. You might have to do that because we, we, we... Hey, the I am demo. a student here at West Valley College and I belong to the TRIO program. What is TRIO? Again, Spacebar plays it, the timeline. support service program that helps low-income or first-generation students throughout college. Okay, so go and find your first clip. Remember, you can zoom here to see more or see less of the video. You can scrub. Find another spot. Here, she's going to talk again right here. Okay. So again, end point is right here. Oh, I don't like that part where she is. So I might start right there. Cool things about Trio is... Oh, well, I missed that. Girl Student Support Service. Okay, I'm going to go to over here. Cool things about Trio is... One of the cool things about Trio is that they loan out graphic calculators, tablets, um, school supplies. No, she already messed up. Okay. She couldn't remember. Let's try.
try again. Some of the cool things about Trio is that they loan out. Some of the cool things about Trio is that they loan out graphing calculators, tablets, school supplies, book vouchers, and we have a very dedicated staff with counseling. Well, she messed that up, I think. Did she do that again? The great thing about our counselors is that... No, I don't think she did it again. She, we're good. And we have a very dedicated staff with counseling. Okay, I'm going to end it there. And then uh, to insert that, after you find another spot that you want, again, in and out is right here. Uh, just hit insert if your playhead's at the end, and it'll put it right afterwards, right there. Boom. So you can see I have two of them here. And then I can play a little more. She's going to talk about counseling. The great thing about our counselors is that they take the extra time. No, that's not what it said. <laughs> the great thing about the trio counselors is that they it's <laughs> the great thing about the trio counselors is that they take the extra time to make sure that you are on the right path. That is not what it No, she's struggling. <laughs> about our trio counselors. The great thing about our trio counselors is that they take the extra time to answer your questions and make sure that you are on the right path. There you go. She got that one done. So again, insert Make sure the playhead's at the end now, because it inserts wherever this playhead is. very dedicated is. staff with counseling. So make sure the playhead's at the end, and there's a little button right here. It says insert, and you set a new in and out point, and you hit insert. Boom, it puts it right at the end. Or you can click and drag it down. If you want to click and drag, drag from here down. Okay, one more clip. I'm going to do one more here. Also try to provide a sense of family with We also try to provide a sense of family with open snacks. Open snacks? We also Okay. We also try to Present family with to try to provide a set. We also try to provide a sense of family with open house events with coffee and snacks. Wonderful. Okay, that's my last clip. So I'm going to slap that in there. So I, I put four of them together. So try and put a couple together. Again, practice the in and out points. Put it in there. And then watch hey, this. Hey, I am a student here at West Valley College, and I belong to the TRIO program. What is TRIO? TRIO is a federal student support service program that helps low-income or first-generation students throughout college. Some of the cool things about TRIO is that... And notice I didn't put any transitions in. This kind of interview is more of a cut, cut, cut. Again, if you want to fine tune, you would zoom in. Down here is a zoom option as well, so you can zoom in and zoom out. Again, this is showing more and less, and you can, you know, let's say we want to cut a little bit off the beginning of this one. I would zoom in pretty detail here, zoom in, maybe just move it a little bit and slide it a little bit like that. That's one way of doing it. Some of the cool things about Trio is that they loan out graphing calculus. But then I have a little gap probably right here. I'd have to move all my clips down. There we go. So you might have to work about, you know, the staff with counseling. The great thing about our trio that one wasn't bad. is that they take the extra time. Even though she's talking a little different. And make sure that you are on the right path. 
Well, that was a little goofy right there as far as her, her, you know. So I would zoom in again. I would cut out some of the beginning of this one by moving that and then dragging this together and just try and see how it goes from one. We also try. That's better there. So, you know, quick, if you're doing, you know, I would even cut a little bit of this one out and move it over so it goes real quick. We also try. See that right there. So, you know, fine tuning, you know, you just need to practice as far as trying to get it. Um, especially if it's an interview and somebody's talking. It's like you're zooming in. Think of this as a timeline, right? It goes from it goes from zero 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 to nine thirty six, right? Okay. As you're doing that, it's like you're changing time. You're moving oh, time, time so closer. You're like moving. Mm -hmm. No, it's not changing. This is the end. Okay. But you're, it's like you're zooming in on a certain area of it. Right. So yeah. we have a timeline, right? Okay. Nine over there. Nine over here. Okay. So you want to be able to see in detail just this area as you move it. It's like over here. Not changing the end is still there. It's just you're zooming in to see more of that. Okay, area. so I'm, it's like first three seconds, right? So yeah. And the best one should be yeah. there. Mm -hmm. If I, I can go all the way down to each frame, so now I'm seeing one frame at a time. That's I want to see them one at a time. Five, five, five. And now if I zoom in, I can see it goes oh, up. Yes. Okay. Oh, you're, you're zooming in the timeline, not the view. Yeah, you're zooming. Okay, so again, I all you know, an interview like this is just I let the camera roll the whole time and just cut it up later on. It's much easier doing that sometimes than it is to start and stop, start and stop your camera, because then you're already making. Every time you start and stop the camera, it makes a new file. Okay, so do I want to be faced with a whole bunch of smaller files or one big file that I just chop up? It's up to you. I mean, you can do it any way you want, but um, you know. Remember, every time you start and stop the camera, it's going to make a new file. So just be aware of that. It would be nice, though, if they have a little name that shows up underneath there. Okay, so now they're going to get rid of the title window in here, I guess. I'm, I guess I'm assuming. But it's still in there, so I'm going to use that for right now. Where are the titles at that time? Yeah, we're going to do it again. Okay. So let's make a title. For our interviewer, interviewee, so um, we refer to a title as a bumper sometimes is the term used to describe it. Uh, again, I'm going to put my cursor where I think it's going to come in. I'm going to kind of do it here. I'm not going to do it at the very beginning. I'm going to kind of start it a little bit later. You know, kind of where she pauses a little bit. We'll, come, we'll have it fly in from the edge and then fly out. Okay, so to make a bumper, I'm going to use the title window in Premiere by going under File, New, Legacy Title. File, New, Legacy Title. And it's going to come up with some settings. These are basically uh, the default settings. This video was shot in high definition. You'll notice it's 1920 by 1080. And it was shot at 24 frames a second. Well, it says 23.976, but it's kind of 24 frames a second. And so uh, you can give it a name if you want. We can call it title or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. And if I hit OK, it'll open up the title window. You can see that. So in my bumper, I'm going to have kind of a glowy little bar that goes across. Okay, one of some of the things you can do is you've got these basic graphics over here. When you use the basic graphics, you'll notice there is some options over here for 
color of it and stuff like that. Then um, once I put the great the basic graphics on that, then I'll put my text over top of that. So I'm going to make first a bar, and then I'll put my text over there to fit inside the bar. The bar could have a shadow if you want. You've seen things on TV, right? A lot of the graphics are, are blended with the background as well, so they'll all have an opacity so that it can blend with, you know, because we'll have a pop-up here, and we want to see through to see if, you know, her skin's still in her hair or they won't come over there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bar. To make a bar, I'm going to use the rectangle tool, which is this one right here, rectangle tool. Oh, sorry. Where's that uh, file under edit or just under file, file. new legacy oh, title? Okay. Yes. Uh huh. And then uh, again, I'm going to use the uh, rectangle tool, and I'm going to kind of go all the way from the edge. Again, rectangle tool. I'm going to draw all the way from the edge, kind of. A little bit down there. Think of what you see on TV when you're watching news, right? They kind of have it. I'm going to drag a bar kind of across like that. That might be a little high, maybe a little lower. But of course, it's solid and it looks kind of yucky right there. To change the color is over here where there is a color where it says fill and there's a color right here. You can either you can use the eyedropper to suck up a color in your frame or you can click on the square and choose a color. To choose a color, this is the normal color picker on a computer. Most of you have a hue that goes up and down like this. This is hue. And so if you click on the square, it'll give you hue. So maybe I want a nice kind of light blue. I'm going to do kind of a dark. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll do kind of light, and then we'll make it dark text. I don't know. You either got to do something. So I'm going to choose a blue. And that's pretty ugly. And then there's an opacity right there. So again, this is color. So drew, draw a rectangle. So all I did. If you make a mistake, you can just hit delete. No, that didn't work. Don't hit delete. Um, right click on it and say cut, and that'll go away. There we go. Right click and say cut, and I can draw again. Let me draw up. I'm gonna draw a little bit lower. Let's do a little bit lower here. Again, a color type there, and then here's an opacity, and we can turn it down a little bit. See how the opacity is here? So there's an opacity. If you want a line around your box, you can turn the stroke on by hitting Add. That'll add a line around it. If you want to type in some text over your box, and um, I could use the text tool. It's right here. See the text tool? And I can click on the text and type in right over top of it. I don't remember her name now. Um, she was what from what program though? She did say the name of her program. Trio? trio? Yeah, student. <laughs> we'll call her student from Trio. T R I. Trio. How well? Trio. T R I E O. Trio. Now, of course, it's blue. That's not a very good color. I might change that color to. Um, again, the text is here. You got font up here if you want a font. I think we looked at the text tool one day, didn't we? There's a font there, and then there should be a color. Oh, here's a font here. Oh, here's the color. I might choose a dark color and uh, maybe change the size. There's a size option, font size right there. And maybe make it bold. I guess this one doesn't have bold. Let's see. Ooh, look at that. No. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. Or maybe, I don't know if I like black. How about we go with some spacey yellow or something? Ooh, that's not going to work. Boy, you need some graphic design skills, don't I? Um, how about some dark, ugly black? That's no good. Or maybe I could change the rectangle to a, um, a light color. How about that? There we go. That looks better. Trio seems yellow anyway. Trio, T R I O, I don't know. Trio, T R I O, I don't Thank you. 
was a rectangle. Five and a half. And then you draw the box. And I remember if I start in the upper left, I'm going to draw it in the lower right. Very nice. So again, a bumper, you know, your person needs to have a name, some sort of name to them. No E in trail? Yours looks right. How about that? Student from Trio. I don't know. <clears throat> so, so, when I'm done, I can just hit this red X. You don't have to save. It's already automatically saved. You'll notice that in the window over here, you'll notice I do have my title here. So just like last week when we were making this, you need to layer up. Remember, it layers up. So I'm going to take my title here. And I'm going to drag it onto above my clip here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So again, it's layered up. Right now, it just pops on, pops off, pops on, pops off. So I'm going to stretch it to make it last a little longer, maybe. So if you wanted to slide in and slide off, <laughs> again, it, make sure you put it above it. If you want it to slide in and slide off, I select the um, title. And just like last week when we were animating the pictures, we use the effects controls right here. Effects controls. And so the position is what I want. So this is the actual length up here. See how I drag the scrub head, scrub, scrub. This is called a scrub head at the top up here. See that? Okay, I'm going to start at the beginning. So I'm going to need four points. Four points. One for it to start off the visible area. One for it to come onto the visible area. One for it to stay on in the visible area. And one for it to fly off. Okay, so you need four points in there. So here is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use just position. I put my, again, I have my title selected. I go to the very beginning right here, and I hit position, boom, once. I move it a little bit. I hit this diamond right here twice. Move it a little bit. Hit my diamond again three times. Move all the way to the end. Hit my diamond four times. So again, I did one diamond, two diamond, three diamond, four diamond. Okay, so... The first diamond, I want to go off the screen. To move it off the screen, I'm going to drag my, uh, I don't know if it's this one or this one. Which one do you think it is? This one or this one? Oh, that would be down. I don't want that one. I'm going to drag it off the screen. There we go. So it's going to come flying on to that diamond. And then for the final diamond, I'm going to go all the way to the final diamond. You can click this little arrow. It'll take you right to the diamond. And I'm going to drag that. Uh, oh, no, wrong way. Uh-oh. You can't see it, can you? Uh-oh. That's not good. Well, we could just put in the number. What was it, 125? There we go, 125. And then it'll fly off. So again, I got one diamond flying on. And then another diamond flying off. If you make a mistake and you want to delete a diamond, you can click on it. And I think you can hit the delete key. Yeah. If you want to duplicate a diamond, you can click on it and hold the option key and click and drag it, and you can duplicate it. So let's try that. It's the same thing like we did last week with pictures, but we're just doing it with uh, text. So here she goes. Hey, I am a student here at West Valley College, and I belong to the TRIO program. What is TRIO? 
CREO is a federal student support service program that helps. And it fades off. So again, I just did diamonds for this. Because animation's hard. Uh, I'm going to delete all these diamonds here. Delete them all. Okay. If you want to fade, probably the easiest way to get it to fade is to go to the effects window. Effects window, if you can find it. And remember the transition? I think we were putting transition between pictures last class. I'm going to use a transition called dissolve. And I can put the one that says cross dissolve at the beginning of my title. And then put cross dissolve at the end of my title. And that will just fade on. Watch again right now. I am a student here at West Valley College. It just fades on. What is TRIO? TRIO is a federal student support service program and it fades that off. helps low income. Again, the easiest way to fade a title on and off is to use the cross dissolve. You can find cross dissolve under effects. If you don't see effects, you can bring effects by going under window effects. That brings up the effects window and cross dissolve is located underneath uh, video transitions, dissolve, and then drag it from here. Drag the cross dissolve to the very beginning and drag the cross dissolve to the very end. And it's a very quick way to have things fade on and off. Hey, I am a student here at West Valley College and I belong to the TRIO program. What is TRIO? TRIO is a federal student support service program that helps low income or first generation students throughout college. Some of the cool things about TRIO Okay, so see if you can make the title come on and off. So to put this on to YouTube, I would then make sure this is selected down here. Notice how I put blue down here. See how you can click around the windows like this? See how you're clicking around the windows? Click and make sure this is blue. The timeline is blue here. And then to export out for YouTube, we go underneath File, Export, Media, File, Export, Media. And then you have a couple things to look at. First one is what format do you want? Right here where it says format. The first one is kind of defaulted to the H.264, which is the YouTube format. So I would leave that all alone. You'll see there's a whole bunch of different ones in there. We can talk a little bit later about why I might use one over the other. Uh, right here where it says preset, though, if you want YouTube, you can click there, and you'll notice you got YouTube options at the bottom. I would do the 1080p HD is the one I would choose. You can see them down here. I would use the 1080p HD there for high definition. And then right here is the name of the clip. And so if I click on there, I can give it a name. This is TRIO, T-R-I, TRIO program. Program, there we go, TRIO program. And then I'm just going to slap it on the desktop by choosing desktop. So again, this is where your file name, where it's going. This is the preset. This is the format. When you're done, you hit export right here. And it'll go and make a final video. And that's what you upload to YouTube. You don't upload the Premiere file because it's just how you built it. You got to make a final video out of it. And it's very popular on YouTube to do the talking head. People are making millions of dollars on YouTube, aren't they? How do you make lots of money on YouTube? Amazon Affiliate. You know about Amazon Affiliate? You don't know about Amazon Affiliate? Okay, well, let's talk about Amazon Affiliate. You are a person, you know something. You know things. Maybe you know something more than anybody else about a certain product. Okay, so what Amazon Affiliate is, is if... People go from YouTube to Amazon and they buy a product and they make money, right? They make a blog, make a YouTube channel, and of course you sign up for Amazon affiliate. And you can recommend products, make videos. <laughs> That's why, why do you think there's so many products being recommended on YouTube? Because people are making so much money off that. 
and then you write a blog around it. So if they go from your blog to Amazon and they buy a product, they don't even have to buy the product you talk about. Amazon gives you 24 hours. Even if they they go from your blog or your YouTube channel, let's say they go from your YouTube channel to Amazon, and they're on Amazon, they're looking at the product you were talking about in your video, uh, but they decide not to buy that, but oh, they need a toothpaste or something like that, and they buy that toothpaste, you can get that money too. Okay, it's called the Amazon affiliate. You look it up. You should start making money now. You're going to make it thousands. No problem. You go ahead. You know. So, so basically, you just you go to Amazon on the YouTube. So you have a link. All you sign, all you need to do is sign up for Amazon affiliate. Amazon knows when you go from YouTube to their store, they know who you are. As long as you're signed up, because you when you sign up for Amazon affiliate, you say, hey, I have this YouTube channel. That's this is my YouTube channel. You don't have to do anything else. They do everything for you. They do all the tracking. You just make videos, put them on there, sign up for Amazon affiliate, and you can start collecting checks. So as long as you have a computer person who is checking registrations and everything. There's a whole bunch of them. I'm just giving you a general idea. There's a lot more to it. But but that's that's there's a theory behind it. Okay, you guys all right with the editing part today? You ready to start shooting a video? Uh-huh. You okay? Okay, so let's talk about interviews. Uh, we'll look at some techniques, and then we'll, we'll talk about the camera, and then we'll interview some people, we'll interview each other. You guys learned kind of on the topic today. Uh, again, I will have another instructor come and help us with the slides. We can make him be our subject mediator. He's better at editing. Look at some techniques for interviews, and then we'll talk about the cameras. So you don't have to save this. This was just practice. I'm going to stop.